What's going guys? Hey, today I wanted to show you guys the quick access, the, the fastest way to access the drive cups on this truck. You know, I've, I've thought of it before, you know, going through the underside. It's, it's really simple to pop this off and, and access it right here. But all in all, man, if you're going to do it and you want to do both of them, the, the quickest, easiest way is the most direct way. But for most that don't know, if anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, if you buy this truck, the only gripe or anything that's going on with this truck right now is the grub screw issue that was on the drive cup, which was coming out and it was tearing up some stuff. So it's pretty well covered. If you have the truck, you probably may have already experienced it, maybe not. If you haven't, you may be lucked out or maybe even have a brand new revision if, if they're out yet. I'll show you what that looks like, for, or at least a way to find out if you have the revision or not. So I'll give you a quick insight of that. And then uh, I'm going to show you basically the easiest way, which is pretty much cut and dry. It's just the quick access to the top, and then we'll go from there. But the, the quickest way to find out if you have the new one or the old one is put yourself a flashlight. You can actually see it. You can't see it in the rear because the drive cup's on the inside there. It goes through the chassis, and it's right under there where the spur is. But this one, if you look in, you're looking right about here but through here so if you look in there which I'll try to get the camera if I can see what I'm seeing on there okay so I mean I can see it on where I'm looking <laughs> I don't know how, how good you can see that actually right now but but that little grub screw right there is telling you that you have basically the truck that you're going to need to do this to so if you see the new style which uh, we just found out recently uh, it's a little pin that's going to go through it's going to go through the drive cup that way and then it probably going to be a ring or something that holds that on just based on the the photos we see on the new uh, manual that's uploaded on red cat's website right now for this truck if anybody has the truck you probably have the i think it's the 116752 pin um, you know, showing for what that part is. The new one is, uh, I, I haven't memorized the part yet, but the new one is different. It's just an actual drop in pin instead of a grub pin. So, you know, if you see that grub screw head, you need to, you need to pay attention to this if you haven't already done it. So, but you're going to want to do it. It's going to save you time. Red Cat will warranty you for the most part if this happens to you, but I mean, it's preventive maintenance. You don't want to be down. I mean, it's something you can take we'll see how long it takes to actually do it but it, it's not long at all so obviously this is a roller chassis so i'm going to act like there's an esc here um that's why i got this on here i'm going to leave this on here represents an esc because you don't have to take all that stuff off this doesn't have to be off uh, this is a roller i'm getting ready to do uh, breakdown or or sell this roller one way or the other might make it an e5hx i'm not sure yet but one way or the other um I'm using it just basically to show you, so we're gonna get right to it. I mean, that was eight screws. Let me just lift this up. Now you're gonna have the wires from the front. You can unplug them. Just remember, pay attention, guys. I mean, the biggest thing is to make sure you got your red red wire, black wire, blacks towards the front. Just kind of remember that. So pull that out that's your servo I mean your uh, LEDs second one same thing ground is towards the right Just pull it out that's in your second slot now the bottom's got if you've never done this the bottom's got these wire attachments which you can actually take off right here and I can lay but I don't need to do that right now for what I'm doing I'm just gonna lay it over here but you can actually disconnect this piece right here and have the three um, connected wires disconnect so here's the drive cup. Let's get down close and look at this. Is that right? There we go. Let's get that focus in there. All right. So look at the ring, the top. That's the back end of it. And there's the front end. And it gives you access straight up and down right there okay so that's pretty easy to get to so it's a two let's see is it two or two and a half all right so it's a two millimeter 
and just <clears throat> well, isn't that decent but who knows how tight again if you couldn't couldn't see the access through the front and you get in here you see this grub again this is something that you should not have to do guys There's the problem right there. That little guy comes out, backs itself out, and what it winds up doing is pulling out a little bit right here. It starts tearing all this up from here all the way around. It comes out. A lot of times, sometimes it'll come out and it'll lock it up, and you won't have any, any kind of movement whatsoever because this is no center diff. It's just a lock spur on a rod. So, I mean, you upgrade this to the center diff, and the front will continue to turn, the rear will lock up and kind of draw draw your wear to the problem. Make your wear the problem. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So it's very, very easy, very quick to get to this problem, man. I mean it's it's worth checking out no matter what. Um, this one's a little bit more difficult, as you can see, it sits up in there, but the front isn't even as much of a big deal. But really, truthfully, you can access this through the front right here if you're good and careful if you got a ball in but you can make that grip I've done that before um, you can get right in there take that out do the same thing put it back in um, that, that'll save you from having to take off the, the right clip which right now it's no big deal if you want easier access you can do that as well uh, you just take off these screws here of course your four diff screws drop them drop it right here these two so six screws here and then these four screws and then once you expose this you got the, the long bolts here that are connected by a nut on this end and you can remove these two nuts and then I will release this whole actually once you remove the two nuts and remove this out this whole piece can come straight up you just gotta pull this front out a little bit because the hinge pins go from here straight through and then you just kinda embed themselves just gently into this red piece so when you go to do that, you can actually, once this front's exposed, you can actually take a pair of needle nose, grab the end of this uh, diff, or suspension hinge pin right here, pull it out a little bit, and you won't have that problem. This will come straight up, exposing that gear. And you can do that as well to the rear, but it's definitely easier and less screws involved to do it this way. So that's, um, that's the access to that, man. It's, it's very... Very easy to fix, very easy to get to. It's, it's worth doing. Like I said, if, if you have this truck, uh, save yourself some headache, save yourself some downtime, and, and just get that done because it, it's going to be needed if you have that set up. It has not been done. For a while there, I thought the revision was they went through and loctited all these, but apparently that's not the case. It looks like they have changed the whole design, so you can't do this with one hand. <laughs> I was going to put that back in, but regardless, that, that's how you get to it, man. You throw some Loctite thread lock. I mean, go heavy. Um, a lot of people are having issues with that. Don't go red. You don't really need to go red. But go heavy on the blue. Uh, make sure you give it, a, you know, since you're going a little heavier, most people make that mistake and try to give it 12 hours. I mean, 12 hours is if you put lock, uh, thread lock on the right way. If you're going heavy, you got to give it 24 to 36 hours just to make sure that you're giving it enough time for the thickness and the amount that you put on it going heavy. So don't make that mistake and say, oh, well, I put it extra heavy and it still failed on me. But that's the biggest thing. People got the itch to drive this. As soon as you thread like that thing, man, you want to get out there and go. So if you're going to do it, do it right. Uh, give it at least 24 hours if you go medium heavy. Uh, if you go, if you glob it on there, man, you got to give it about 36 hours or it's still kind of moist. So, all right, um, that's basically all I got, man. I just want to show that quick access. If you guys have any questions, you can feel free to hit me up, leave me a comment. Uh, I'm going to be doing a bunch more videos kind of like this, just showing access things. I might break this truck down a little further since I got it apart. Maybe show some differential access or something. We'll, we'll see. Depends on what I want to do with it. I'll uh, debate that. If I want to break it down into partial chassis, I'll, I'll show some more of this one. If not, I'll do it on the next one. So, Alright guys, again, hit me up if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.